Artless.io. Music licensing reimagined. Welcome back to the Tim and Steve Show. I am Tim Beard. I'm Steve Morris. If you haven't noticed, it's a little different. Yeah, you're sitting on the right side. Yes, I'm on the right side now. And uh, For the Tim and Steve Show, it makes sense that since we read left to right, you're on our right, but when you watch it, you'll be on the left. Right? Yeah, exactly. So now it good. makes sense. Yeah. The last 92 episodes or 91 should have been Steve and Tim's show. Now it's the Tim and Steve show. <laughs> so I hand all the control over to you, Tim. I'll sit here and listen. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so you text me like, hey, I think we should switch sides. And then I'm not big on change, of course. I'm like, I don't know. I'll do it because you want to do it. And I know why you want to do it because... You're always like paranoid about your par your partially paralyzed right side. So now, you know. Now it's facing the wall, so a little less visible for the audience. Yeah. And me whenever I watch the show. So there we have it. And now people can tell if I'm actually smiling, laughing, scowling. I always look like I'm in a constant state of scowling, but yeah. that's just to try to keep my face from looking like a Picasso. And I appreciate anybody that knows me always says that you can't really tell. But I always also say kids and general officers and drunk people, those three groups, will the tell you the honest. truth. Yeah. yeah. So kids, the first thing they say is, what's wrong with your face? General officer, what's wrong with your face? And a drunk person, what's going on with your face? <laughs> I'll say, like, usually what's going on. But the kids in general are like, what's wrong? As... So anyway, that's my life experience. You can't take that away from me, Timothy. <laughs> so yesterday I came. That's up. my truth. That's your truth. <laughs> You're living with there. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Whatever Standing those phrases are. Um. So yeah, you can kind of see there'll be a, there's a banner up, but the new table we had to disassemble it to get it up here. Like I measured everything, like it would fit, but just like anything, you know. You can measure it doesn't mean it's actually going to fit you know and uh, so i was kind of like panicking yes as we're taking it apart and like i'm watching my work <laughs> fall apart on the floor you know and but we got it back together and i was very impressed because i like to pick on you for not, like having manly stuff on whatever but you had a, a nail gun with better nails than i had uh i used inch and a half you had some good two inch 16 gauge minor 18 gauge uh which should hold it together better um what we're gonna do is like so we don't have much of a gap right now the way we kind of sit so the reason we wanted to do this is so when we have like chief lee's coming in tomorrow it looks normal and not stupid like someone on the end table like i just don't like how it looks so tomorrow when we do the show with him you'll sit like here he'll sit down there and um but then hopefully next week when we start doing the show we'll spread back apart a little bit and we're going to have TV in the middle for a background where then when we talk about things, we can put up stuff yeah. on the TV. So, well, we can watch it with you and yeah. communicate. Yeah. And then we can, you know, if we have a me, anything, we can put it up there. Also, next week, uh, Therese, who is like the founder of uh, The Resolve and like We the People New Hampshire, um, she was the nurse that was fired for refusing the vaccine. And she's done a lot of stuff since then. She was arrested in an executive council meeting for saying amen, um, which we have a video of that. At some point, we're going to show that on the show, too. But she's supposed to uh, zoom in next week and, and talk to us about some stuff. So I'm uh, hoping I can get her on there, and we'll make it work. So exciting. Exciting. Trying to step it up, right? Yeah, we got to constantly improve. Trying. You know. That's, what, you know, that's what you learn in the military is you don't just sit around. You constantly make things better. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I showed up yesterday, and, uh, well, let's back up. So, at the Super Bowl, I don't know how it got mentioned, but you were picking on me about streaking up your toilet, and you don't have a toilet brush. 
And because Steve's always trying to find something like to brag on me. I mean, it's kind of <laughs> what we do. So trust me, anyone that knows us, like I pick on him all the time. Like, man, I wish there was a Marine around to help us out, you know, <laughs> things like that. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get you, Steve. So I went on Amazon and I got, you know, a $9 toilet brush. And then I'm like, wait, I'll make it a gift. And they wrap it in this gift bag. This thing, is a nice gift bag. Which is actually, and I should have, and ironically, I happened to be here when it showed up and brought the box into the house. I should have recorded it because it was pretty good. But, uh, yeah, so now there's a toilet brush in there. Yeah, you're not a fan of putting on gloves and using a scrubber, no. sponge, whatever? No. Just got the, you know, the old toilet brush for you. So. <laughs> but it was, not, it was it was actually kind of worked out well, too, because the mail lady was here who was the mail lady when I lived on Herd Road, and she's, like, super sweet. She's like, oh, my God, I, oh my God, I saw you. Like, there's a bucket of mail down to the post office for you because for some reason it didn't get forwarded. And, like, she had a whole story about it. You know, like, I was building a house. I'm like, the mailbox was there, like, I don't know, forever. But anyways, so she was super nice, and I was like, all right, I'll stop down and get it. But she felt bad. I'm like, no, no, don't feel bad. Have you stopped? Did you go by and grab it? I haven't yet. Maybe on the, when I leave here today, I'll grab it. Andrea said she'd grab it, but, um, yeah. She's like, there's probably a lot of stuff in there you need. And I'm like. I need to go by the oh. post office. I need to mail Zeta some stuff. But I told her I was going to mail it on Monday, and then right after I sent that text to Zeta, Nikki said, oh, something I ordered for her in November is just shipped out, and let's wait until we get that. And so I'm like, man, I just wrote Zeta and told her I was putting it in the mail. So, Zeta, I know you're not watching this, but I'll text her and tell sooner her. or later I'm going to get to the post office and mail you your sweatshirt that you're looking for. <sighs> um, yeah, hopefully it gets there. Like, I hate mailing stuff because it seems to ours, I don't know. I'm not a fan of FedEx. I've said this many times. Because FedEx would be like, it's going to be there today. You might as well just plan on tomorrow because, in my experience, this is just how it works. UPS has always been good, but overall, things seem to get lost nowadays. More on the post office side, but I hate mailing stuff because it's... Yeah, I was a postal commander, so I understand probably could do intimately the postal service and the customer service complaints and also the security and the amount of work it takes to get mail separated and get it to somebody and they do it pretty quickly so i guess is this probably like a staffing issue they just don't have the staff they used to have you know i Could don't know be. i mean i don't know i mean most of the stuff is automated like in a war zone once it gets on that plane it's not really automated now by the time we left there was more you know more so than normal but it's a stressful job being responsible for that because they have to um, basically close the books out every day, and it has to be within. I mean, my goal is always like let's not have any errors, but humans are involved, so there's always going to be some errors. But a lot of work goes into it, day in and day out. So I have my own issues. Like I've had to call the postmaster in Maine about a package, but you know it was found and everything worked out. And every time I go into the post office, there's a guy that works in there and i think he's a veteran um yeah, that's probably jonathan yeah he's pretty good he is or john Riva, not jonathan john well i think his name's actually jonathan i'm not saying that everybody else isn't good i'm just saying the times that i deal with him they're memorable because he's he's good personable talks to you it's not all business you know what i mean it's more yeah. of a newport feel exactly which is nice yeah yeah no and i think it's just it's just how it is, right? It's just how things are now. Like, you know, it's somewhere it gets lost, and it's. I mean, honestly, it's probably like surprising that things don't get lost more often, considering the sheer volume that shipped, and then the little different pieces to it. You know, now, there was a time where we would get, and uh, we probably still do. And maybe I, I haven't seen it lately, but another three hundred down uh, by the curve there. I can't remember the name of the road. But anyway, there's a 300 down there, and so often they'll get mine and I'll get theirs. I got all the time you see on what's up Newport. Didn't we get an extra package at their house today? Because it says it was delivered and, you know, it's not in my house. And, yeah, 
I played that game before too. Someone sent me a like a eight hundred dollar camera head for sewer snake or sewer camera. Um, it might even be a thousand dollars. It was stupid expensive. And oh yeah, we delivered it to four seventeen Bradford Road. And I'm like, I don't know where you got that address. I haven't lived there in forever. And they're like, oh, we looked into it, and it was delivered to the doorstep. And I'm like, well, that's funny because there's no house anymore because it, it had burnt after it. And actually, Andrea lived there when it, it burnt. I'm like, you guys are full of shit. Like, you're just – so luckily they did insurance thing, whatever, and then sent me another one. But I was like, well, hell no, I'm not going to be out of, you know, what, send you another 1000 So now it cost me $2,000. Yeah. One of the gentlemen um... – on our road, he's not. He's not on my road, but you know, it's all the same road. When it yeah. goes around the curve, it changes names. Anyway, he came over one day because he realized it was my medicine from the VA. Because he's a veteran, and he was yeah. like, "I want to make sure you got this." I mean, he brought it to the house for me. Yeah, it was very nice of him. Yeah, definitely. That's the other thing too. Like people ship medicine, and like you lose that, and then what? You call your doctor and be like, "Hey, I didn't get my medicine." Because sometimes... Depending like, on what it is, they'll be like, yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. So then it's, yeah, the pros and cons of everything, I guess. Yeah, i got to have my migraine medicine. Yeah. And they only give me like nine at a time. Bad. So hopefully I don't have more than three migraines a month, right? Because it's like a quarterly, anyway. The life and struggles of Steve. You know, it's tough. But I appreciate my neighbor being neighborly and bringing it to me. Yeah, well, that was super nice. Uh, so last night, uh, Lydia had a basketball game at Key Surge. And, uh, of course, it just seems to be how it's worked lately with her. But, like, she hurt her ankle again a little bit because um, she broke it over the summer. And then ever since then, well, not even summer, it was what, spring. And ever since then, it's been... I thought I was supposed to get stronger after it heals from a break. But it could be her lig- ligaments and tendons that are stretched out too much or something. Yeah, it's... Not the actual bone structure, but... And she didn't do this... Like, there was exercises she should have done and she still should be doing, and she didn't do them. And she needs to because, I mean, you're 14 years old, you're in middle school, you have one of the four years of school sports, you know, and it shouldn't be, you know... You're young, like Andrea. I get it. Like, all right, you're older. You don't. You're. It's different. But with her, it should just heal. Like you know, I think anyways. And yeah, so I don't know. But anyways, they uh, they won. She sent me a picture. It was thirty-eight, thirty-eight with six seconds left or something like that. And Haley was up, got fouled, and was up. Made both her baskets. Nice. And then they they won the game, so uh, that's pressure right there. Oh, and I was like that. Like, Props to Haley because that is not easy. Yeah, like that is like, that is the ultimate. Yeah, when you're outside practicing, you're the game is on the line, and you got to sink these two free throws. And she did it, and they beat Kearsarge, which is yeah. yeah, twice three times the size of our school. So that's awesome. Yeah, so they did well, and then they have a game tonight um, versus Hanover. I guess Hanover is a pretty good team, so we'll see and. She wants to play. I, I don't know. She she wore her like boot to school today to see because you know just to was, keep it. Yeah, like she limped in the house last night and everything. So I'm like, we expect to play today, right? And I, I don't know how you're gonna do that, but we'll see. I, well, I mean, as a uh, father figure, the stepfather, father. I mean, you're basically your dad. Uh, sit her down and say, all right, we're doing your uh, stretches tonight for ten minutes or. Yeah, she needs to, like, really... Like, I roll her ankle a lot. Because, I mean, I'm 40-some-odd years old, and my wife has to do that with me because I'm kind of the same way. Like, you know, stretch. Yeah, you have to, like... And like I, I half-ass stretch, and then Nikki's like, "What are you? that's not going to do anything. Get down there and put some effort into it. Or you're not going to ever feel any better. So that might be what old Olivia needs. Some tough love from you or Andrea. Yeah, like, I try to, like, roll her ankle and then, like, massaged the back of her ankle and her ankle last night some and like she's like oh that hurts i'm like okay well where that hurt is where i need to like keep massaging it because that's obviously what the, the issue is right spine. and uh it, you know she's like oh no it did feel a little better but it's like you need to like strengthen this so that because this shouldn't be 
you shouldn't be coming home after practice or anything. Be like, oh, my ankle hurts. Like, right. yeah, if you have a, you know. Does she get the right shoes? Does she need to wear an ankle brace? Does she wear an ankle well, brace? These are all kinds. If she had been wearing an ankle brace, then misplaced it, or didn't have it in the game yesterday, which may have contributed. Um, I guess she, like, she went up or something and came down. And, like, she didn't hyperextend it. She, like, pulled it forward or something a little bit. Um, Basketball is a tough sport if you don't have strong ankles and knees. Yeah, up and down the court, like back and like, down. I mean, down. and you're changing directions like Jump immediately. Was, like mm-hmm. your shoes are supposed to be sticky so that you can stop and then go yep. 90, 180 degrees the opposite way. Yeah, so we'll see. So they're last in middle school games tonight. And uh, hopefully, yeah, hopefully she'll get to play. Uh, I don't know. I'm always like Larry, like I don't want to push her. Like, oh no, you should go do it because, okay, and she may hurt herself more than can't do softball or can't right do whatever. I, I would I push know. her to strengthen it up, do some really leg something. raises on that one ankle, yeah. or build up to it. I'm sure those are. They probably gave her a list of things to do. Yeah, get your towel out, stretch it, push on it, pull. Yeah, you, yeah. So, and uh, varsity boys had a game last night, which is a playoff game and unfortunately they lost but uh that's was, awesome they made the playoffs because they didn't win a game for yeah, years were, right or was that soccer no they lost like 17 in a row or something it was a, it they was, had a long losing streak yeah it was something but this year they had uh a few wins so it's that's good a little bit yeah um is it Caden Caden LeClaire was on the team who was in Claremont and then you know, he moved to Newport. His dad's actually teaching in middle school now. Um, actually, he's Olivia's uh, middle school coach. But uh, he's an incredible player. Like in Division Three, I think he is either the top scorer or he's just like number two. Like he's he's wow. really good, um, which obviously drastically helped the team this year, um, and it helped bring out the you know like Owen um, Bullio, who was a senior this year, and like Carter Polari. I think it really helped pull them together too and so they finished out uh they finished out well so you know? carter's recovered finally from <laughs> yeah from his uh broken arm i think it was yeah he managed to play the last football he played the championship game and then he was able to, to you know do basketball or whatever but that's good. Um, so it's funny because there's a couple i think there was three seniors this year for the boys but there's no seniors in the girls there's actually only one junior so super young team, so a lot of potential there, and we'll see what the boys kind of come into it. So it's exciting, it is. It's good stuff. So the other thing I saw the other day, and I definitely want to mention it because it's pretty awesome. Is uh, congratulations to Timmy, Eric, Kyle, and Aaron. Now let me think about this: Timmy Fratzel, Aaron Fellows. Um, I believe it's Eric Wilkinson. I might be wrong, but. And then uh, Kyle Ashley, they broke their they broke the school's four by four hundred meter indoor track record yesterday at the state meet. So this was on Sunday, I believe, uh, by nine seconds. Wow, <laughs> that's ridiculous! Destroyed it. Uh, Timmy is a senior and Eric's a senior, but Kyle I think is a junior and Aaron's a sophomore. So there's still more you know, potential for good things come out of that. So that's awesome. That is awesome. I was like... Nine seconds. Nine seconds. That's awesome. Yep. And then the other thing I saw was uh, come support the Newport Middle School wrestling at their final meet. It's going to be the Newport Tigers versus the the Bow Middle School Brawlers Thursday the 23rd. So next Thursday, 6 o'clock at Bow High School, wear your orange and black, or black and orange sport. So I saw that. I was like, hey, we'll mention that too. Middles, the Bow Brawlers. It's like a good that. name. It is a good name. I mean, it almost makes me sensitive, though. What are we brawling about? It's so violent. Just kidding, by the way. That's sarcasm. Yeah, he's kidding. <laughs> I get you that pink wig. We have a pink wig somewhere. That's what, like, you start to whine and sound that way. I'm going to, like, hand you the pink wig and, like, put the wig on. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the other thing I saw was high school, middle school, spring athletic sign-up night, parents meeting, 
five o'clock Wednesday, March third. So a couple of weeks, but it's coming up fast. Yeah, this year is going by quickly. It's quick. crazy. It's going by quick. Crazy, this year crazy. Has gone by. Quick. I think there's let's see Monday there should be a selectman meeting, a regular one, because there was a meeting on Monday this past or well, this week, but it was a budget meeting because it's that time of year. March fourteenth, we have our vote townwide vote for the school's budget um school board moderator no one ran against me or jenna so it's just whatever hopefully some one person votes for you yeah hopefully one person will vote for me i have to vote for myself but anyways the budget which is important that we get passed is um a dollar to impact because no matter what the default budget is 87 cents so it's either eighty-seven cents increase or a dollar eighty-five increase, but the difference is, if we don't get the budget passed, the para contracts, so the para profession contracts, which these paras get paid less than you make at McDonald's, and that's no joke. Um, we have like fourteen openings in the school because we can't fill them because who would want to be a para professional when you make like twelve bucks an hour, and you can make more at McDonald's. And you have an important job like dealing with students and behavior and all those kind of fun things and it doesn't sound something you know no, it's for even even what we're trying to increase it to it still is like mm, still isn't enough but it's it's better and so we really need this budget to pass yeah i'm not a, i'm not a fan of taxes no like, um, but at the same time this is the system that we have and we need professionals right and we need it's so, in the name, and so we need to pay them and treat them as professionals. Yeah, and unlike you know federal budgets, like there's no pork in the budget. You know, like we look through the budget and we're like, whoa, where can we cut, right? And there's no place. There's no place not to not cut. not if we want to improve the curriculum, to right. improve not just uh, elementary, but all of our schools in the late the testing last year. Yeah. dropped a little bit so there's some money in there for the the bus drivers because we don't have enough bus drivers yeah the the bus crew is really pulling their a share that a lot of town may not even realize that like it's it's bad it's it's bad and caleb and crew do an outstanding job with what they have yeah. oh there was no bus yesterday to take the kids to the care center, so you had to get parents to give them rides i think in this case like the one of the white vans was broken or something. I don't know. But typically in the past, any of these sports events, there's a bus that brings them. So there's a bus driver, right? Um, it's it's a street. You can't. Yeah, it's yeah. hard enough just to do the normal bus route and that. And so there's some money in there that's desperately needed to. Hopefully hire hopefully help, in a, in a bus driver and yeah, a van driver. And, and help with that. Um, there's two high school teachers in there, an English and a math teacher that apparently a few years ago they caught yeah we, we had 22 teachers yeah. four or five years ago and uh, shane and martin the principal pointed out we're down to 16. Yeah. and, and then I, the ref, what happens there is 30 some odd kids have a full schedule at the high school 32. and the fact is like i asked the question like why did 32 it, out of 290 some odd students so, uh, at the high school but it's like I asked the question, why, why did we, like, why were the positions cut, right? Budget. I'm like, wait, we cut teaching positions? Like, the only purpose of the school is to teach kids. You cut teachers out? So, what? Like, to me, I'm like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. Like, I don't know what you can cut. You know, and obviously there's the challenge we went through, right? Mm, where do we cut it? But to cut teachers? So you have six teachers less than you had before and you have yeah, it's 32 kids that have full schedules like uh that's not fair to our kids and we're working on it like yes there's the, a lot the, of things the town us as board members we're trying you know i mean we're i think that the way that i voted anyway because i mean we don't have voted the same on everything but i've i've voted to try to provide the best atmosphere and education for the kids and just like when I ran, and we've been talking about it, is I want people to be held to account. Yeah. Students, teachers, administrators. Like if, if any of us mess up, 
It doesn't mean I want somebody fired or, you know, right. I want to understand that, like, it's not okay. There's no excuse. Like, I get it. Now, I, I've said this before, but you, re, the reasons why people are not doing what you expect them to do is either they don't know, they don't care, or they weren't trained properly. And I very rarely encounter someone who just doesn't care. But that's not the no- normal. It's because either they don't know or they weren't trained properly. Right. So hopefully we can continue to work on all aspects and bring up our our rankings and, and the overall town to have, like, pride in the results that our kids are producing. Because I taught uh, a few years ago, and I know that these students are better than the scores reflect. So it's right. a matter of taking the test seriously or, uh, you know, looking – getting the feedback to make sure that we're teaching at the right levels and you know progression but the our we have some really good kids in the school district and it's not fair to them or the community that uh, we're ranked as low as we are on the you know real estate commercial ranking side and just the state in general yeah and then you look at the state scores and we're still kind of towards the bottom and we're better than that mm-hmm. and I, and our teachers put in you know hard effort and i know that they're working hard so it's just a matter of you know building everything up and, and getting back focused yeah we feel like changed a ton of stuff. like so things people need to know too is like we have a new superintendent new her whole staff like her her team the administration is, like they're all new the principal in the middle school is new like there's so much new Right, what's going on, so that's like, it's not necessarily like, oh, the media. So and so is not doing their job. It's no, this is all new, and this takes time, which is tough for me as a business person because I don't. I'm just like, get it done. Like, snap my fingers, it's done. Right? It doesn't work that way with the school or government in general. It's slower, but I'm telling you, there's lots of changes that we've seen that, and we've either proved or we've been told about too that. Like, yeah, we're going to do this. We're gonna do, like, so it, it's there, and it's coming. It's just we really need this budget to pass so that, like I said, we can actually fill the positions next year for the pairs. And, uh, and get our bus drivers. Our bus drivers, those two other get teachers. Get them some, like, yeah. And keep in mind, our, you know, just like everyone else's electric bill, fuel bill, everything, what was it, like three hundred grand more this year or, you know, proposed for next right. year than – right now from the budget from last year because everything's gone up in price so it affects the school too so um yeah so we're not and yeah, we're all feeling the pinch yeah definitely um yeah we don't get free electricity and no gas or oil at, no. as a government entity that's yeah you don't get nothing you know the school has the same increases that we do as supposedly supposedly from what i heard on the radio on the way over here, it was like Sununu's trying to pass some stuff in this budget that he's working on now, which is going to get more money to schools. Uh, so Sununu, though, wants to run for president from what everyone, you know, the talk is. Yeah, he did go make a couple of appearances out of state it month, is. last month, I think, or earlier this month. I find it funny because he kind of like went after um, Ron DeSantis a little bit, but like Florida is a free state. Like, it's free. Like, the, the mask and all that stuff. Uh, going after Disney for, like, all their woke stuff and, you know, all the things that he's done. And it appears that way. It appears. And then Sunun was like, oh, like, I'm the freest state. In the, nah, and I'm not, like, not true. Really? Because I remember you vetoing that parents' rights bill. I remember him agreeing to the budget and ending the emergency powers and then didn't. Right? Wasn't that the uh, agreement that... Yeah. They would pass the budget as long as he. Rem- mm-hmm. Yeah, so we're not that free. I mean, they, they, the tourist bureau has got rid of live free or die. It's live free. It's interesting though, because come here on vacation. He said last night, the other day, live free or die state. So did he? he actually said it. He did. So it's convenient now for him. Looking for political clout, clout. It's a live free or die state. I would try to change it to live free. You know, the the best, usually, the ones that don't want it, 
right? Like, I mean, when you want it that bad, I don't know. It just something seems off. Yeah. Well, Trees comes on the show next week. Yeah, I wonder if she'll be able to talk about any of that stuff. I'm sure. She knows so much more than we do. She's so involved now. Like, literally went from a nurse to, you know, movement activist. Public enemy <laughs> number one, probably. But because uh, she just saw the things were happening and are happening and continue to happen. And we just, yeah, I was talking to some friends the other day, and they were lamenting society for their kids. And I'm like, well, if our parents would have saw that it was baloney when the CIA uh, put the the uh, investigation of the JFK assassination on hold for 60 or 70 years, that should tell you that they're involved. Like with the vaccines, not letting us see the data for 70 years, you're hiding something. Like it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. But people still are like, oh, no, it makes sense. It doesn't make sense at all. The government should not say, oh, you can look at it in 60 years. And really, if we wanted to go to a, a happy-go-lucky, peaceful society across the world, then uh, you shouldn't have top secret. Everything should be out on the table. It right. should be, this person's lying to you all, and they're trying to use it for political purposes. Uh, we lied to you 10 years ago. It wasn't us. However, we found evidence that there was lies about this, that, and the other, and we need to do right by that. But we don't ever – we know that there's lies that the government has told over the last 246 years, and yet the government doesn't acknowledge it and doesn't seem to get better from my perspective. Yeah, and they represent us. Represent Allegedly us. represent yeah. us, and they don't. They yeah. represent big business or whoever their donors are. I watched a movie last night. It was called Sweet Girls on Netflix. It had, uh, who's a dude from, uh, yeah. Big, Sweet Girls? It's that big, uh, Jason. Uh, what's he playing? Momoa? Yes. Game of Thrones. That guy. He played in it. And. Aquaman? Yeah. So it. It would have been, like, a better movie if I didn't watch it the whole time thinking how true it really was. But basically, his wife has cancer. There's a medicine, There's a drug that the doctor comes and is like, hey, great news. Like, this will save your wife, blah, blah, blah. The company then pulls it from production saying, no, we're not making it anymore, even though he knows it will save his wife. And she dies. And then two years later... Of course, he's trying to work to, like, figure out, you know, what's – how he can get back at these people, basically. And then he meets this guy who kind of, like, spilled the beans on the situation on the train or whatever. Some guy that comes and, like – I'm totally going to wreck the move for you guys, but you still should watch it. But uh, – Well, you can – there's espionage and – I yeah. mean, you can leave All it right. to I'll the leave it so people can yeah, – right. So it's basically the corruption of the – Medical industry, yep, with the with the government, with the and, cahoots of the government, yep, and yeah, it's and how they went after this person, and, and they go after silence. anybody that exactly, not like silence, like you know, gonna put her right, but to, court thing, I'm going to murder you, but it just well, you know, sometimes scary. people have sixty some odd friends that commit suicide, yeah. I mean, that happens to one family. but Just one family. <laughs> so weird. God, am I glad I'm not friends with them. Oh, Lee, could you imagine? No. <laughs> Sleeping with one eye open. Yeah. Oof. Uh, that's all right. I didn't even have it on here, but I heard about this the other day, too, which is interesting. So Baltimore School District, Baltimore, Maryland, uh, 23 of their schools are failing at math. And when I say failing at math, every single student, every single one is not failing, proficient. Is not proficient. 23 schools, every student. Well, think about it. You know, whenever you talk about proficient, did we talk about this on the show? It's like one through four. Yeah, they dumb it down. As so, it like, you can't get, like, hey, you're retaining 80% of the information. What do we got to do to get you... 
to retain more. Or 80% is great. That's good. Instead, now it's a... So knowing what we know, that they dumb down, they dumb it down anyways, which we've seen. Well, I off. called it out whenever you look on the state's website at what the standard for proficiency is in New Hampshire. It's not very high. They don't want our kids educated that well. Right. They don't want them to be able to fight back in the sense of knowing intellectually rights, understanding, knowing. not like mm -hmm. physically, but fight back as having the capacity to read and understand and then synthesize that information and make good decisions on it. They want 30 to 40 percent of the population because if they didn't, then they would raise the standard up and they would ensure right. that everybody has the tools to do that. So as you can imagine, though, like... Instead, they focus on other things about... It's just like I said the other day in the military. You want me to close with and destroy the enemy, but I have 400 days of non-military training that you want to brainwash all these soldiers with. Right? I mean, that's the way I looked at it. Like, I would sit in some of those trainings and be like, does anybody really believe this? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, like ridiculous stuff. Or I would sit through training and be like, man, I've had this for 20 years. I'm glad I'm being told it yet again. Like, I'm the kind of guy that, like, yeah, you need to tell me something once, maybe twice. Yeah. And then maybe every few years you do a, you know what I mean? It's easy to track. But instead, they want you focus on the wrong things. They don't want you going to the range. They don't want you going camping out in the woods. They do, by the way. They want you to do all that, but yet they don't give you the time to do everything that you need. So then something obviously has to fail. Yeah. Like, I mean, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. They over, they they put too many requirements, and most of them, I would say, are not to close with and destroy the enemy. It's to, you know, stop believing that you have any individuality. The state is correct. That's the kind of stuff that, like, they're, you know, teaching soldiers. Back when I was in it, it might have changed by now. I'm sure it's worse, but... I'm sure it is. They probably don't. They probably and I don't. feel bad for the ones that are like, that have to, because there's a lot of people that know that a lot of the stuff is garbage. Like they just want to go out and they want to fire their weapons. They want to get their vehicles ready to go. They want to stay in shape. You know, like I, I was a tank guy. Not, no, I didn't have a tank, but I was in a mechanized unit for most of my career. And then at the end of my career, I went to the 25th Infantry Division where not many vehicles. Everybody walks everywhere. And units like that should be doing physical training six hours a day, not an hour and a half, two hours. Like I needed six hours of training because I had not been in that light infantry mindset ever in my career. And then I get there and I'm like, wait, where's, I thought we had like Nine minutes to run one mile, not seven. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's a big difference. Uh, that's a huge difference. Over, like, many miles, too, not just, like, one mile. Anybody can go run a seven-minute mile once, one mile. But then to do it for four miles uphill, it's brutal. But you have to give them the time. And so my point is, is if this were, if they were serious, then they would have those units out doing physical training more than an hour, hour and a half a day. Because that's ultimately what you need is strong, tough-willed individuals that will close with and destroy the enemy. You apply that to the state government, right? They're putting all this stuff on the schools, and it's like, well, how about we just get everybody to be 80% proficient in reading, writing, and arithmetic and civics and start putting in tax classes so everybody knows how to beat the tax system? And by beat, I mean take advantage of the loopholes that the big businesses some I mean, some of it is obviously the more money, the more you donate and all that other stuff. But, I mean, America is a inherently anti-tax country. It was. That's how it was founded. That's what drives me nuts is people forget that. Like, I got it. We need, you know, infrastructure. But how much of the federal government's money goes to uh, protect borders and build infrastructure from state to state borders yeah exactly What's a border? nothing right now so that's why our government's failing us from my perspective so there's it's kind of there's two different numbers but there's 159 schools totally in all of baltimore and 
about a little, this one says uh, 111,000 students. This other one says about 80, so it's kind of in between there. But 23 of those schools, you can almost guess where those schools are. Poorest. Yeah, they're probably darkest, inner city schools. Exactly. Uh, none. No proficiency. Nobody. Well, uh, I, I can't remember if it was Baltimore, but there was one school district. And I, I don't know if we talked about it on the show or just in person. but So they would set up the math test. So you'd have an algebra equation. But it would also co- correlate with Black History Month. So, like, if you knew that Martin Luther King was the answer, then you would get the math question right because it's kind of the same. So they ask you a math question, and then they ask you a Basically, they're not teaching your question. kids a damn thing. No, they're teaching they're just, you to be able to, oh, well, if it's Martin test. Luther King, right. then I know it's B. Right, right, right. But I'm, I don't know if it was Baltimore, huh. and I don't know and I'm, I know I'm not making this up. Well, it might not be as bad as what I'm saying because right. this was months ago that I read this article. But, but the, so, so the lady that's in charge of this curriculum and, or whatever, um, apparently she gets paid like $400,000 a year, and she got an award not long ago for like education, and 23 of these schools are completely failing. <laughs> Like, seriously? Like, you can't make this stuff up? Like, I, I don't even... No value in education, though. And that might have been just a, to correlate with Black History Month, and then somebody made it worse. You know what I mean? That's why I'm saying... But I read that a few months ago, and so it might... It might have been, like, just the month of February to make math fun or something, but... Still, though, you're not teaching math, like... Whatever those lessons are in February, if they're not learning to draw out the equation and fit and solve it, then they're going to be behind whenever it goes, and you lose that if it's just a, a fun activity or two. Right. Yeah. It, you know what I mean? So like, either way, you're not helping by doing that. No. And you could apply that to anybody. I mean, you could replace it with Texas history, and it's still cheating. Right. You're not learning actual arithmetic. Apparently, it didn't work very well because you know. But I don't know if it was. Bo- I, I just did a quick check. I couldn't find it. I didn't know what the keywords to put in there, but it was like making math fun in Black History Month is what came up. So that's why I caveat that because it could have been somebody that put the article on there and I read it and it didn't actually correlate it to Black History Month. It was just saying that. But the the article was lamenting the loss of math skills across the country. You know what I mean? It was like yeah. we need to get better across the board. It wasn't like a negative in that sense. It was negative in the sense of like we need to get focused back and get our kids focused on learning. Yeah. Some people want that. A lot of people don't. A lot of people, as in, you know, think about it, the less you know, you didn't know you had a right to free speech. You didn't know you had a right to the Second Amendment, or you didn't know that you could vote. You didn't know, like, yeah, think, dumb down society. It's easy to control. Them. Well, you make us dumber. You control the food supply. Yeah, that's a big one. It's like from Dune: He who controls the spice controls the universe. He who controls. The farmland controls the country. Yeah. Because we're not self sustaining individuals anymore. We rely on the yeah. work of others for everything. For everything. Everything. Like we are a nation of consumers. Like we got to get back to producing. That's. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I'll go back. I want to go back to this Ohio train crash, derailment, whatever. Uh, just because it's not being talked about nationally that much. Like, it's not like this big thing, right? It's kind of like here and there. Like, well, I it's not a big thing it. in the sense of, like I read off the data sheet the other day, that's a bad chemical. And if we release, if it's true and that's what happened and that's how much they released, like, people should be concerned, right? So you don't want to create fear because, like, where are the local news reports, right? We had the one guy getting arrested, and then, you know, I was thinking about it, and the general officers usually train to not put their hand, like, you know, like you wouldn't even make general officer normally if you're the kind of person I would hope to put your hands on somebody. 
right? So like we talked about it, and I was like, well, I could see him wanting it to be quiet because in the military when a general speaks. But still, like he's not going to put his hands on somebody that that easily. So, but you know what I mean? Like, it just to me, there's like, I need more information. And you had mentioned, why don't we drive out there? I know. I mean, like, maybe we should just take a attempted. 12 hour one way trip. Yeah. Like, so I saw this, like, I didn't research and find this. I found it and then I looked into it a little bit. But so apparently, Netflix had a movie come out called White Noise in 2022, which was about Ohio, a train crash in Ohio with chemical exposure. And some of the extras were from East Palestine, Ohio. So on the internet, it's all like, well, like, that's just conspiracy. So right they there, predict like, like this whole. It's thing. like where there's a a rehearsal for something like a terrorist attack, and then right. uh, within a week or two, there's a attack in that city. Like that's happened. Like you can look that up and like correlation between rehearsal or preparation. That's why I said when I was in the military, we always prepped for a dirty bomb going off in a certain city. Right. And I, I totally expect if that ever happens, it will go off in that city. Like, I mean, because we didn't really change. We never changed the city. Right. Right. Like three to right. six well, years. Because even after it. I left yeah. that unit, you could still see where the exercises were going on in the country. And that is the same every time. Interesting. So that's thing. Uh, so we shall see. Hopefully not ever. Ohio chemical spill worse than originally told. We basically nuked a town. Animals dying in Ohio after train derailment and controlled release of toxic chemicals. Um, so those train cars, I think I think it was Ben Shapiro. I think it was I heard the other day. It was like there was five car loads of this stuff, and that should be about two hundred fifty thousand gallons per tanker. So well, no, not that much. That's what you'd say. No, it's fifteen to thirty-three thousand per container. So maybe all five total. Two fifty. Okay. Get you. Okay. So, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So about two hundred fifty thousand gallons of this stuff, and then they decide the best way to get rid of it because they're worried about it exploding. Which honestly, if it exploded, I, I, what's the difference between them exploding it? I mean, maybe. I mean, they control it. I, that's the that more of a blast area. I mean, it it might have cratered for like. I don't know, but there's a lot of risk to control burn too. Like, but on the fire department, and you know, a country, it's especially when it's not like so. When we do control burns in the fire department, we control the situation from start to finish, where and things can still go wrong. This is a crash scene where the factors of this, this, and that they don't. There's so many factors they have no clue about. So. I mean, they could have blew it up when they just started a fire. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Um, I just don't understand how anyone said this is the best option was to burn these things up right here. Like, I, I don't ever remember in history of ever burning up anything. That no, was, well, like, they'll, like, you, you see it with munitions, right? It's like, so um, if they find something and it's got a deadly gas in it, then they try to burn it up, so burn it it up it. higher than yes. that's whatever. And so did, didn't you play a video the other day where the firefighter was like, dude, I'm just a firefighter, like doing what I'm told to do or whatever. <laughs> so like it just it just seems a little, I don't know. It, uh, there's uh, There's got to be some citizen journalists out there after the whole – uh, movements that have gone on over the last seven years in this country, you think somebody, just like the one clip that we had watched where it was like, you know, this lady reported her chickens and then it's a guy that looks like me, and well, then I'm kind of like, well, that's not a lady. Yeah, that was weird. Well, I had this clip that I want to play that I found online. I was trying to just find one thing, and then I saw this, and I'm like, well, I might want to use this piece because it's, uh, it was, the website to give the person credit is, is gformanbcp.com. But uh, check out this video. It's not only just about the, the Ohio crash, but then I'm talking about Pete Buttigieg, who was the transportation secretary, who's basically said hardly anything about this. And this is all his responsibility as the transportation secretary. Um, but he's now focused on yeah, interstate uh, transportation, such yeah. as the railroad. Yeah. You know. <laughs> but apparently... To him, you know, there's 
too many white people on construction jobs, and that's what his concern is this week. So check out, uh, check this video out. Tell us what you think about this. Give us the construct of how you will deconstruct the racism that was built into the roadways that you talked to the Grio earlier when you broke that information with us. Can you talk to us about how that could be deconstructed? For sure, yeah. So you know, the principle of Justice 40 is that at least 40 percent of the clean investments in this bill will go to benefit the communities that are overburdened, overburdened and, and underserved. As to where we target those, those dollars, you know, I, I'm still surprised that some people were surprised when I pointed to the fact that uh, if a highway was built for the purpose of di dividing a white and a black neighborhood, or if an underpass was constructed such that a bus carrying mostly black and Puerto Rican kids uh, to a beach, or that would have been, uh, in New York was, was designed uh, too low for it to pass by, that that obviously reflects racism that went into those design choices. Um, I don't think we have anything to lose by confronting that simple reality. And I think we have everything to gain by acknowledging it and then dealing with it, which is why the reconnecting communities, that billion dollars, is something we want to get to work right away uh, uh, putting to work all right guys so that is our woke transportation secretary pete Buttigieg, talking about dealing with systemically racist roads and highways <laughs> yes the roads and the highways are racist according to the woke white house and the transportation secretary pete Buttigieg. um our administration or the Biden administration <laughs> the people that are allegedly running this country it's a clown show, okay? They're more concerned about race than they are real, actual problems. Like, you know, what's going on in East Palestine, uh, Ohio, the train derailment that has uh, caused chemicals to contaminate the air and water. Massive train derailed Friday, 20 of them carrying hazardous materials as flames lit up the sky in northeastern Ohio. The evacuation order is in place for anyone within a mile radius of the crash site. These aren't, these aren't storm clouds. This is the fucking shit! The fucking shit they burn off in East Palestine! This is not fucking storm clouds! Look at it! Officials are claiming that the air and water are safe. The residents say they can still smell chlorine. They've complained about their eyes watering when they go outside. And one woman says the noxious air killed her chickens. Out of nowhere, he just started coughing really hard and just shut down and went very fast. Look at all these fucking crows. I'm not kidding. This is within 10 miles of East Palestine. You have not evacuated. Please leave the area. Yeah, and you would think that I... Uh, Transportation Secretary uh, Pete Buttigieg would be on it, right? He would be on this. He would be talking about this. This would be at the top of his mind, at the top of his agenda, uh, considering that, again, this probably is the biggest ecological disaster in American history. But no, he's not. He's busy uh, at a conference talking about how there are too many white construction workers in so-called communities of color. Take a look to work with your contractors, uh, to work with your community colleges on building a workforce that reflects the community. We have heard way too many stories from generations past of infrastructure where you got a, a neighborhood, often a neighborhood of color, that finally sees the project come to them, but everyone in the hard hats on that project looking like, uh, uh, you know, doing, doing the good paying jobs, don't look like they came from anywhere near the neighborhood. Right. You can build community wealth that will help close wealth gaps in this country if we can tear down those barriers. But that happens at the delivery level. Uh, yeah, so there was no mention at this conference at all about East Palestine or the train derailments that continue to happen around the country like the one that happened in uh, Texas today. That's pretty interesting. So obviously there's a bunch of videos in there from 
you know, TikTok, like people are made. Right. The, the citizen journalists. Those, those are all right. citizen things. Uh, yeah. I, but like, glad I don't live yeah. close, but I'm still concerned that we live east of it. Yeah, the winds blow. I mean, don't get me wrong, like, buildings burn all the time with bad things in them. But this is one concentrated piece of. Well, it's you know. the chemical. Like, it's. Yeah. When you read the fact sheet, anyway, from the New Jersey Department of Health that I read the other day, most of it on the show, there's some bad stuff that can happen with that. It's not good for your body. It's not good for the environment. So a couple things I want to hit on before we really get into booty. It's horrible for your body. Is, like, where all the activists out there that are all against, like, the environment being, you know, wrecked and their fossil fuels. I haven't heard of not a right. They should Nothing. be demanding to shut down all railroad. Something, right? Right. The movement of these containers until they can figure out what caused the wreck. Crickets. Like, if I were going to be an activist, that would be my first thing. It was like, we need to stop all train of cars. And, I mean, even the government might need to, like, what, to figure out what caused that. Supposedly, when in Texas, a truck, or, like, caused it. All right. Which there's a movie clip. On a, I don't know if it's the same movie or not, if it's White Noise. but it's White like Noise this. is a track trailer going through the... Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know. And that one... The, the, is that the one where the guy's doing, like, the the ritual in front of people, and then as he's talking, they show the... So they... They, they basically equate him doing this ritual. Adam Driver, is he the one in that movie? Is that White Noise? I don't know. I, um... I watched There's just some weird about. stuff out there, like life imitating art, art imitating life, and just it all interests me, and it just all seems a little too convenient sometimes that life imitates art more often. Yeah. I... Now, don't get me wrong. I don't know if somebody was actually doing like a seance or whatever. I just That yeah. was part of the scene with the truck driving into it is almost as if he were making it happen with his words and movements you know but this is what gets witchcraft me. type stuff basically like, you shouldn't fly anywhere you shouldn't drive anywhere you shouldn't do any of that because it's bad for the environment oh yeah you need to move into a 15 minute city so you're walled in and you can look out through glass right. and watch the elites enjoying the fresh air and the right. beaches that way we get you off the beach because really Right. There are people who deserve that beach property more than any little peon such as ourselves. Yeah. You need to be in a 15-minute city. Yeah. All your crops grown inside and fake light. But you can get all the way across in 15 minutes. Right. So Hop on that fast train. Right. You don't have any issues at all. I mean, I've seen a lot of science fiction movies where the, nothing ever goes well in situations like that. Which surprises me why anybody would think that, like, if this is the best, like, so men and women put their imaginations out there, they go out there, and they're like, this is how I see this going down. Like, here's all the negative things, right? So, like, in most of those movies, they're like, oh, 15 Minute City, it usually starts off with, like, idealistic intents, right? Intentions of, oh, we're, you know, we're going to help save the environment, and then. 20 minutes in, you realize that it's all the same stuff. You have somebody, you have a hierarchy. This guy or gal wants more than everybody else because they deserve it. And then bad things happen. That's like the nature of humans. <laughs> it's human nature, I guess, is to want your stuff and you want more than everybody else. Or I think everybody should just be like content with enough of a garden to produce crops. Yeah, we may have to import some because obviously we have seasons. Maybe you have a grow tent, you know, or a, a greenhouse of some kind out in the yard to where you can grow all year round, but I don't know. Re relying on big business for me is not, or big farming. I'll stick to the locals. Yeah. And I'll stick to living on the land and not going to a 15 minute city to bring it back. Rely on yourself. Don't rely on anybody else because they'll take advantage of you eventually. It's just human nature. I keep in mind, go to a city that they've run in, They've run every city in the country. Under the, the ground. ground. Pretty much. Yeah, like there's nothing yeah. everywhere. I was like, so I finished Flint Town. Well, not everywhere, but you get my yeah. point. 
I watched I finished Flint Town and I had like one episode left from last time we talked about, it, I believe. And in two thousand seventeen Flint Town Flint was the uh Flint Town was the name of the show. Flint was the poorest city in the country. Poorest city in the whole country. And uh and I just think about how much money we've sent overseas and to Ukraine and all this and but our infrastructure's failing everywhere, not just Flint, but Flint would be a good starting point. Like, okay, I guess we're gonna have to go in there. We're gonna replace all the water lines and stuff. The amount of money we piss away everywhere else, man, we could do an awful lot in our country. No, I know. Better, That's, I say you know? that all the time. Yeah. No, instead we spend, you know, a billion here and a billion there for a billion with a B for stupid shit. Like, Oh, uh, equality and, uh, you know, sunflowers or something. Based on my experience, Tom, and I'll tell anybody this that wants to ask me or talk to me about it. In 2015, or uh, Trump said, "Why are we paying?" And he says it all the time. You can find clips, but it to me it related because I experienced it firsthand that we pay a disproportionate share of everything. Yeah. So, like, I understand strategically, right? So we're going to go do training exercises in country X. But so, you know, so that gives us access or whatever, right? So we're getting in there. We're closer. We can, what you know, do whatever militaries do. But then we pay them a lot of money to come in there and train them. We pay them for us to train them, which, again, I understand under strategic, somebody's going to say we need to make sure that they're meeting our standards. But why are we paying them for us to have the opportunity to trade them? If anything, it should be a mutually beneficial where it's like halvesies. <laughs> right? Like that would be fair. Right. Like, hey, you guys come over. We're going to need some little support because you're, you know, the great Satan, allegedly. <laughs> so uh, divvy up, pony up some money. But to me, it, it just it resonated with me when you look at it as how much money we send overseas versus how much money we even spend in our own country. And then what really drove it home for me is in the uh, when inflation started really kicking in and the army told soldiers to go get on food stamps. That's To me, that is no excuse. Up. Every leader that signed off thinking that was a good thing to say should be fired by somebody. Like, if I, like what, who was in that meeting? Where was the guy or gal to say, don't say this? Like, this is ridiculous. The emperor has no clothes. Like, to sit there and say that, and granted, there's not that many of us that have served in the military. It's a small percentage. But that's totally disrespectful to the amount of sacrifices they've made, like, emotionally, psychologically, time-wise, family-wise. Yeah. It's and then it's your, your go get on food stamps. So they have a full-time job where they can be sent to their death at any given moment. And your family is not really good enough for us to make sure that we immediately enact some pay raises so that you can continue to support your family while we send you all over the world, potentially. Yeah. There's no excuse for that. Like, I, that's unforgivable in my book. I agree. And yeah. they might have even said stuff like that when I was in, and maybe I missed it. But now that I'm out and I'm aware of just how much money we waste overseas, ridiculous. Take care of your military. Take care of your own citizens. Take care of your own infrastructure. Protect your own border. Didn't the Pentagon lose a trillion dollars not like too long ago? Uh, I know right before 9-11 it did, but I'm pretty sure it recently. Yeah, Rumsfeld. Couldn't find a trillion dollars. Couldn't right. find it. Which surprises me, by the way, because when it's budget time, like you, every like the lowest level units know exactly where their money's going. So it's not it's not them. It's that's not them. It's from. up at the Pentagon mm. level. It's at higher levels. It's not a you know my battalion. Trillion. My battalion used up a million extra dollars. No, and you know that's not how it's happening. It's happening way up high because at the lowest levels. They're digging into stuff and, you know, yeah, you don't need that much paper, right? Like, they're, they're into the nitty-gritty and then you, as you get up higher. So it's corruption at the top. Surprise, surprise. 
So it comes in here and obviously gets diverted before it gets too many eyes on it because once there are eyes on it, there's a general officer getting briefed on like almost down to the penny. Like we do 5,000 on our board, you know, like right, in the right, army, right. it's like every penny. Yeah. Everything, you know, at a certain levels. Like once you get up to four star, he's not necessarily looking at every penny, but he's, it's all accounted for. It's been looked at by his staff or her staff. This is crazy. Like, I don't know, but I'm a, what do I know? Huh? Yeah. That's my own speculation and my own experiences. Take it for what you will. You ever, like, just look at everyone that Biden's appointed and just shake your head because so Buttigieg is only there because... Well, if you recall, right, it's been so long now. Like, his whole thing was not about the best qualified. It was built about building a diverse right. cabinet. Like, it was all about firsts for him. Right. And so when you do that and when you don't... Uh, judge people on their character and their performance and you judge them on the color of their skin or their lifestyle choices. More lifestyle choices in his but, administration. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying? Like, you're yeah. not necessarily going to get the best. Yeah. Like, the guy he had that wears a dress and uh, was caught, like, several times stealing. Oh, for luggage. the nuclear authority? Well, he fired him. Finally. finally. After, what, the second time you caught Stephen yeah, stuff? Yeah, it was the second time he was brought up on charges. And then the he, she, that's the head of the health that's overweight and doesn't even know what sex they are. And that's the health person for this country. Yeah, that's the thing that... Clown. So here's what I can't... Like, like, people want to sit there and they'll judge me. Some, some, A lot of people that watch our show will be like, yeah, I agree with you, probably, but... If there are four to seven people that are watching us looking for me to say something wrong, like I can say it wrong with that. Like, what year was that? 2000, so I don't know, eight or nine years ago, we were putting people out of the military that had body dysmorphia because of the, uh, well, you know, it was the way it was on the schedule, but also because of the way it interferes with command and control. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it stopped with one phone call from President Obama. Yeah. You know, because men can Well, not necessarily him, but like his administration. Right. My point. Because men can have periods. You really should watch that Megan Kelly clip where she rages on the transsexual, trying to compare the transsexual's experience to her experience as a natural woman. Like, she goes off and says things that are uncomfortable. Like, you and I won't, I mean, I guess we could repeat it or whatever. You know what I mean? But, like, it's one of those ones where, but it's, to me, it was powerful coming from a woman with her experiences. And that's my concern as a father of a daughter, right? Like, I don't want, like, men taking over everything under the guise of claiming to be women, right? Like, isn't that the whole thing about women's lib was that women can control things. Women are stronger, smarter, faster on their own, whatever. And then now we have um, males that are infiltrating their spaces. I had a good conversation with uh, my friend Linda yesterday. So for you know what I mean? It's just it's one of those things. Yeah. So... She talked about how, like, one of her friends went to protest something because we were talking about the train stuff. And it was funny because, like, I see things way different now than I have in the past. But she's kind of, like, it's like we're kind of getting to more meet in the middle because, like, she's definitely, like, liberal hippie kind of thing. But she's like, you went and protested, like, what good did that do? I said, you know what good it did all these people to protest for, you know, you know, the environment and all that. It just makes them feel good about themselves. And they, you know, the, the, so many of them that, you know, eat vegan food, eat whatever. Some do it because of diet. They want to do it. Other people do it. Well, it's going to save the environment. So it makes, it's all about making them feel better. It doesn't amount to anything, nothing, zero. But 
makes them feel better. And I was like, yeah, and that's the people that so many people listen to now. It's like, oh, okay, where are those people right now? And they just crashed a train over in Ohio and all these chemicals got out. And why can't I hear you? No. Oh. Well, that's the that's good, though, because at the end of the day, most of us agree with each other, yeah. I think, on things. It's whenever you start believing in the religion of politics or the religion of sexuality or whatever it is, like, just be good to each other. You know what I mean? Like, we made the joke about the the multicolored hair, but at the end of the day, if somebody came out and started talking to us, like, and weren't attacking us, right, but they like, kind of have a conversation, we're not going to be, like, disrespectful to them. I'd, I'd have a conversation and and see exactly where they're coming from, let them know where I'm coming from, and then we can agree to disagree and walk away. But, like, there's certain things that, like, have to have boundaries. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if a book has uh, graphic pictures in it that I wouldn't want my kids seeing without me sitting down, uh, maybe eventually, but, like, there are books out there with some very graphic content that people are demanding be in elementary schools. And if you say no, you're called a book burner. <laughs> like, no, no, no. Like, I don't care about the book. It's the pictures in there because kids find the word ass in the dictionary, and then the whole class goes and makes ass jokes for 20 minutes. Like, that's the nature of kids. Yeah. Kids aren't like, oh, Here's a picture of two grown adult men or women engaging in whatever. This is quite interesting. No, they're like, oh, my God, look at this. And then everybody looks at it, and then it probably creates, from my experience, it would create more discord than harmony. Yeah. But if you, like you said, if you say that's not okay, then you are a person wanting to ban books. Uh, no, I don't want to ban any books. I don't care what the book yeah, is. Just the appropriate age level, just like the movie rating system. Uh, exactly. You can have books in the library about the KKK or about, I don't care. And they should be there, but they shouldn't be given to children. It, right. It's age appropriate. That's all it is. Right. It's age appropriate. And it's up to each individual parents to determine what Correct. is appropriate for their kids. Right. Now, if you have a parent, it's like, well, you know, 16, we shouldn't teach, uh, you know, any sex ed classes, all well, that, because that parents effed in the head. And, but if they're two, or excuse me, if they're in second grade, it still has to be appropriate, right? Yeah, for that. It has to be, you know. Well, just like, and we talked about it, um, I don't know, if, did we talk about it on the show with Andrea? It was like, hey, I think we did, th yeah. it makes sense, right? Yeah. Like, it wasn't about yes. sexuality, it was about protecting and understanding. Yes. Like two totally different things. And so once, because it's so hyped up now that everybody's trying to to teach kids things that, you know, like you shouldn't have a conversation about your sexuality. This is what gets me the most. Okay. Like that just, the, at what point do you're like, oh, let me explain to an eight-year-old. Like an eight-year-old wants to play video games or whatever. Cowboys and Indians. That's not, we probably don't play that anymore. But you know what I mean? Like that's what I want to do with it when I was a kid was like. You know, G.I. Joe, Star Wars. It's totally I was a kid of the 80s. Getting canceled. Cowboys and Indians. You can't say those words. <laughs> Whatever. It's okay. Can't do that. But the tranny can read you a freaking story and talk about that in second grade. You know, I'll, I'll, I don't like clowns. Like, there's something about people hiding behind makeup like that. And a lot of the times that, like, with the transsexuals, when you see pictures of them outside of these, where they're trying to put on shows for kids, the makeup is so, like, I, I, that puts me in, like, fight or flight mode. Like, I don't like clowns. A clown will do best by not even trying to acknowledge that they see me because I don't know how I'm going to react. Like, I know that I'll walk away, but you know what I mean? Like, if they push themselves on me, I I don't know. Like, I don't like clowns. In case anybody is wondering, I do not like clowns. And I'm not the only one that has this rejection of clownography or whatever you want to call it, man. But am I crazy for, like, not all, obviously, but, you know, the ones that make it on to the news channel, like, look like, like some it? of them look like clowns. Yeah. Like Mimi from the Drew Carey show. Yeah. 
Exactly. Like, I love that show. That was the best show ever. But, anyway. but you know, it's exaggerated. I, I get that. There's a whole probably reason for everything. But, like, to me, I, I am... So I'm just equating it to clown makeup. Right? Like... So I'm not... I don't necessarily... So I don't not like you if, like, you were dressed up as a clown. Like, if that was, like, your side gig and people right. still paid for clowns, I'd be yeah, like, yeah, hey, just, like, I can't see you in your clown outfit, right? Like, right, right, right. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a clownist. So, I would love to bring this up tomorrow to chiefly, but he already said no politics, and I think this would breach politics, and so I can't sort of mention it now. So let's throw this out there. We already know the answer, obviously. This is the whole point of it, but... So if me and you were dressed up as a woman, as women, and we're walking down Main Street, Newport, and we see a group of, you know, a couple eight-year-olds, and we walk up to them, and you know, we've got our uh, high heels on, our little skirts, and we've got our, you know, faces all done up, and all this stuff, and we started to like, you know, show them a book with graphic sexual things, and started to talk about sex and all these things. What do you think would happen? We would. I, I we, hope we'd get arrested. I believe we'd be arrested. We would be charged with crimes. Um, rightfully so. Rightfully so. Yet, if we went into the school with their permission, did the exact same thing, that would be okay. That's bullshit. Yeah. But... I'd be like, oh, you, you, you approve this? Well, guess what? <laughs> Whoever you are, principal, whatever, you're now being arrested and charged with this grooming of a minor yeah i don't know how all of a sudden like they do a good job of scaring people not to talk about this stuff like this may not even make it on air by the time the ai i'll be on rumble watches it (laughs) i just upload it there but what the hell like we went from like slowly taking away the moral fabric of the country like yeah they got rid of god took god out of everything okay and okay like and i'm not gonna argue for I'm, I'm not, I'm right. not whatever I okay gotcha. they did it a while ago right to pray out of school all this but if you watch from there we slowly decelerated and we're like losing moral fabric in the country but then in the last couple years you know i almost feel like since covid too like covid did some big old crazy shit to the psyche of people well, in the country. Yeah, yeah. but it's accelerated like the the moral fabric, which is dropping into a hole, is rapidly like picking up speed, and now it's acceptable. Like, oh yeah, it's like there's a South training. Park for that. It's called uh, was it raising the bar? And they get James Cameron to go down and try to raise the bar because society is so morally decayed. And then like you know the the inside joke is is South Park partially responsible for it for their irreverence. You, you know what I mean? Like. I I don't think so. So, like, but take, but there's an episode. But it's basically that. Like, right. um, and this was from ten probably years ago when Honey Boo Boo was a thing, and it was like, who's watching this and making this poor girl famous? You know, that was like the subtext of the show. And of course, yeah. it doesn't get seen as that. It gets seen as right. however people want to see it. But that was right. the thing. It was like our fabric of society is so low that we're recording this poor kid who has health issues that needs. The Intervention, show, right? And like, the, it, the, there's a show on TV that Olivia watches. The what was it six hundred pound sisters or some thousand uh, pound? I don't know. But my this, thousand pound life or something. Yeah, like something like that. And like they used to be, like you could look up the Guinness Book World of Records or the the circus. Yeah, and those women are not as big as people we have in our society today on those shows anyway. Yeah, they're having to like get a crane and lift them out. And we just like talk about the drama and all this, and I'm like, this is like pathetic and horrible. It's and sad. Like I sad. feel bad for them. Like how do they get to that point in their life? And well, we glorify, right? It's like yeah, I don't know if it's. Well, I guess it can be glorified. I mean, they put it on TV right. so that you. It's yeah, not. It's all. Yeah, it's all for profit. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, you know that's a good way to look at it. It's glorified for money. For advertising dollars, because people watch it, obviously. Right. Nikki's watched that show. I, I, I can't. I've seen it, like, because they've had it on or something, but I don't. That, Hoarders, like, these poor people need help. I watched a lot of Hoarders. I'm totally guilty of 
Uh, that, I can't watch it because it, I watch like it. I feel for these people. <laughs> like I want them to, you know, to get better. Yeah. It, yeah, but society, it's, it's and, the, you know, breaking they, down the family, like taking God out of, you know, reducing. They destroyed the family. And they destroyed families. Right. Like, there's not very many. I mean, Bert talks about this often with us, like, you know, especially like in a meeting or whatever. He'll be like, so after World War II, so because of World War II, men are off fighting and women had to go and make planes and all these things that they needed for the war. So. Back then, you know, the United States come together and said, hey, well, we have to do Everybody this. And then after produced. the soldiers came back from war, the women, a lot of them were like, well, I don't want to just go back to being a housewife. I liked making money and stuff, and I want to go work. And I have no problem with that. But that was the beginning of the end of the family unit that mom was home taking care of the kids. Right. So now you yeah. have to entrust other people to raise your children with their yes. morals and values. Or the kids are with a, yeah, with a babysitter because right. mom and dad are working because you have cares. to, you know, all these things. And it's like, and then honestly, it's, it's where it started. I, I could totally point back and say, yeah, I started there. Uh, now, okay, you don't necessarily need to teach God in school, but how about just manners and values and, like, it's not a God thing to be like, you know, I mean, yeah, it's in the Bible, do unto others as you do unto yourself, but uh, that's just a good thing to teach. It doesn't. Right, like, so why aren't we, like, pushing more of this stuff? Like, we need to put the moral stuff back in the country. Now, a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to, you know. This, yeah, man. treat others how you want to be treated. We'll get rid right. of bullying and everything else. Right. Would you want to be treated that way? Like, Right, like you want me to start picking on your flaws, right? Because we're none of us are perfect. No, no. <laughs> you know what I mean. So like, the bully can get bullied. Right. Every bully has something that they, that will crush their self identity and soul. Right. I mean, it's it's just that simple. Yeah. Because know. they're doing that to other people, they're trying to crush who they are. Which I get it. Like you're a kid, you're trying to figure out who you are. You need, you need some space to figure that out because the world is crazy. But you also need familial influence. You need, you know, like, hey, the right thing to do, treat people with dignity and respect and work hard, you know, save money, take care of those around you, shop locally, all these little things that just add up to the smaller community gets better and then the larger community grows because the top is totally corrupted and rotted. From my opinion. Yeah. That's like, you know what I mean? Like it has to start like all the way down here and then we got to like get up. You have to, it's just going to take time. You have to start at this level. You have to. And then you need a state brave enough to say, well, you know, we're not doing this anymore. We're not playing this game anymore. We send you all this federal money that you piss away and we get pennies back. You know, our roads are crap. Our bridges are crap. Trains can't like if I tracks. were in Texas and my border is being overrun and I can see it, I can see it whenever I go shopping, when I'm driving, right? Like there are hindrances to your happiness. Then like, why would you like, I would say Texas, you want my money? You want my tax dollars? Close the border off. You're not getting any of my money until you close the border. It just takes a lot of people to speak as one voice to say, you're not getting any of my money until you fix this. Like, it's over with. I'm cutting you off. You can keep printing it, and it'll destroy the country, but I'm not giving you any more of mine. Yeah. Which, like I said, they'll keep printing it because, they, obviously, they don't care. They don't care. Because they would have stopped printing it a long time ago if they wanted to control the money supply. They'll raise the debt ceiling. Wait. Just wait. It's good until June, I believe it was. I guarantee you they raise it. Guarantee you. Oh, we made a deal. You made a deal? How about, yeah. no, we're not going to raise it. So we're either going to pay the bills or, oh, we're going to bankrupt the country. Bankrupt it? You're $31 trillion in debt. The only thing left to do is file bankruptcy. Right. Like, when are you ever going to pay that off? You're not. You're going to write up a $31 trillion bills or something and hand them out? I was thinking one Warren Buffett said you could fix a deficit in a blink of an eye. All you have to do is say that 
they're not getting paid and nothing's happening until the national debt is fixed and they would right. find a way because, well, okay. Right. I, but no, we've somehow they've got the idea. They, that, well, they've brainwashed people to think that they need the federal government and their lives to to help protect them and nurture them. And you need like the local government. You need the state government, and then you need the federal government to improve infrastructure, Pete Buttigieg. Yeah, you're doing <laughs> such a good job with that. Like, you really should pat yourself on the back. Yeah. All those racist roads. As long as, as long as you don't go get a construction job. Yeah, because if you get a construction job and you're white, you know. See, you're I part think, of the problem. Like, you, I think you're you, a racist just for working construction. I mean, like, right. I mean, that's not what he said, but that's not that far of a slippery slope to get to. No. Finally getting the money in the. But like place. all that does is create division, right? So oh, like we want. hear that and we're like, you're a jackass, dude. Like you just, even that guy was like, I just want my stuff fixed. I don't care. He's like, well, how many times you, oh, let's look at the racial <laughs> breakdown of the road crew. Well, it's funny because when I did a couple of remodels at Walmart, construction job, right? Uh, both times with a bunch of Mexicans uh, from either Texas or down south or whatever come up here and. That I walk around like, well, it's really yeah. brown in here today. I don't <laughs> right. know about this. Like, no, it's no, just... because you're like, let's get the job done. Exactly. So, it's too white, uh, dude. This we are in a clown world. It's the only thing that like everything is offensive to everybody. Yeah, clowns are offensive to me. Yeah. Bozo the Clown. We talked about this before, but I want to put it in a facade again, so I want to put it in a little different perspective. So, according to the United States Department of Agriculture, by the end of 2021, which is obviously past, Chinese investors owned more than 383 million, thousand, excuse me, thousand acres of U.S. land. The land holdings amount to nearly twice the size of New York City. And I looked it up. So Sullivan County, where we live, the whole county is 552 square miles. Well, 383,000 acres is 598 square miles. So bigger than all of Sullivan County, which looking at it that way, I'm like, eh, doesn't seem that big. But the story also said that foreign entities own it was 40 billion acres in the United States, whatever, altogether, or a million. Yeah, I don't know how we allow that to happen in our own country. Why would we allow other national citizens to buy our land? Yeah, because that's like giving up your sovereignty. Country. Yeah. Because yeah, like, all they have, uh, just people don't care about that these days, is what they want you to think. All right. So. We'll just take your company over slowly, and we'll, what we'll do is we'll just buy your country. Yeah, we'll so just buy your country, and we'll just keep taking and keep taking. Like, I, I mean, you don't want to give anybody too much control of the farmland. Like, I, I no, the fact that I lived in St. Louis with bad. Monsanto and all their shenanigans. That's why I have my own garden plot. And for, hopefully the seeds I'm buying really are organic, non-GMO. I'm sure some of them probably aren't, but I hope they are. Right? you got to put a little trust in the in advertising. But I also know that people lie. <laughs> so not only do people lie, but corporations lie. Yeah. Because nobody ever just owns up to anything. It's And it might be because we're such a litigious society. So if you admit that you're wrong, then somebody can sue you and be like, well, you admitted it. So I found it. Approximately 40.8 million acres of U.S. farmland, agricultural land, are owned by foreign entities. Who said this that was okay? What's your source on that one? This is on the blaze. Wow. But, I mean, it's not slanted. It's This is what's owned, so. I saw a, a diagram that compared how much farmland Bill Gates owns compared to China. I just saw that yesterday. 
Interesting enough, Bill Gates owns um, farmland in Ohio. Really? Yeah. I wonder what he thinks about all this. I don't know. Well, I can tell you that uh, it's just a little tidbit of information. So, Because Bill Gates owns a lot of farmland as well. So 400 million acres is... 62,500 square miles. I thought it was 40 million. Yeah. 40.3. You said 400 million. Sorry. 40 million. Let me make sure I got my numbers in the right spot. Yes. 40 million is 62,500 square miles. How many square miles is New Hampshire? Really? What you got? Here, let's go right to the state. Is your is your math not adding up over there? No, it's wow. What you find them? Talk to the audience, baby. All right. So, obviously, the amount of state fifty states. Um, Tolls more. Here we go. So, every state. So twenty two states. Are bigger than that. Wisconsin is 65,503. Okay. But every state under, so Florida, Georgia, Illinois, Iowa, New York. New York smaller than Wisconsin. That's funny. That's 22. Well, it's just like the. So Hawaii, so New Hampshire is 9,351. So that's like five times New Hampshire. Yeah, they they own a lot of land out West. Yeah. Colorado, Wyoming, there's a little bit of land, Idaho. I'm just trying to remember because I looked at it yesterday because it compared. Somebody had found a chart showing China and then Bill Gates farmland or the Gates Foundation, whatever you want to call it. So Maine's, Maine, which is obviously bigger. Maine's state, got a lot of. Uh, 35,387 square miles. So owned by the Chinese? No, it? but they do. Total, yeah. The Chinese own a good. So, like, if you look at the map, there's nothing in Vermont or New Hampshire. Own is either the Chinese or Bill Gates owns a large swath of land in Maine. Crazy. I saw that yesterday too on those charts because I was like, oh wow. One of them. So all the people out there that are struggling to find a house to live in or buy a house or buy a property, just remember that. Foreign entities in this country, they're outside of this country, own two mains, basically. That's crazy. That really puts it in perspective. Yeah, so China's buying up a lot of stuff in Maine. They bought a mill in 2020. They're the town savior as a Chinese businessman. So anyway. You shouldn't allow foreign entities, more so than like Bill Gates. I mean, Bill Gates just has a stench of corruption over him with his alleged Epstein. Well, yeah, he told Musk that you should focus on vaccines and not flying to outer space. Control the people, control with vaccines. Now, I remember that being said from him. Well, he told Trump not to look into vaccines. It'd be bad. That would be bad. Like, you can watch that clip very easily to find where he is telling a late night talk show host, Bill Gates is how he let Trump know that. Don't investigate vaccines. Like, who tells the president? Like, how about, but, you know, if I were telling the story, I would be like, I recommended that he didn't or did do this. But Bill Gates says it like, yeah, I told him it'd be bad. Like, who? you don't tell my president, regardless of what uh, party they are in, you like, you don't tell the president what to do. Business guy. Thief. Yeah. You never made anything. You just basically stole it. Yeah. You patent stuff that you didn't even make. And then you have a software, and then you have an antivirus that you sell for a software that's got all the loopholes that are in there. That like, Right. It's, it's like the... It's like selling the virus. It's almost like cure. you could draw a parallel. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. Another little thing I thought is uh, 
Jim Jordan was criticized for saying that only Americans should vote in American elections. Who would criticize him for that? What is wrong with me? See, I think I'm telling you, that's a communist talking point. And they're taking advantage of weak minded people who don't understand that, like, America is great. America is beautiful. Uh, there's a proper way to come here and live here. And I, I don't Do you have, think about it. That's all we've heard for how many years now, how bad America is by its own government. Right. Oh, it's so bad. So bad. Get the hell out. Like, well, you know, the funny thing to me is how people will sit there and listen to someone from a disadvantaged group that is actually in front of Congress, that is on the news channel, or that just made a billion dollars, and then they're going to tell you about how disadvantaged they are. And it's like, but you're not. You just made a billion dollars auto-tuning, you know, music that you you're not, you don't even have a talent. Your talent is that you can read these words or memorize these words, and then this machine corrects your voice, and now you're making you know millions of dollars. I said billions, but millions. So 162 Democrats voted to allow non-citizens to vote in uh, D.C. elections. All 218 Republicans voted no, and the bill was overturned 260 to 162. You'll be glad to know that Pappas and Custer did not vote in support of this bill wow because that was the first thing i was looking for and i looked on the list i couldn't see it Uh, of course pelosi voted for this bill of course yeah give up your sovereignty yeah like that's because the now there are a segment of society that doesn't understand well let's put this in perspective okay be some people like well yeah but if they're here and they work and okay me and you go over to italy and we're hanging out and they're having an election and be like, we should vote. Right. Right? Um, no, this isn't your country. You don't live here. You're a guest. You're, you're a guest in that country. You have no say. If you want to say, you go back to your country. Well, I mean, that might be a racist ideology. That, I mean, how dare you? How dare you? Whatever. That would be like me deciding I want to paint my house and calling someone in California and be like, what color should I paint this house? Because, you know, you don't live here. You don't. But you should have a say, right? Yeah. So they should have a say. No, I don't know about your analogy there. But, yeah, they don't. They're guests. They don't get a freaking vote. Like, strengthen your souls up, people. Like, have some resolve. A guest comes in your house, Steve, and tells you, why this place is just. Yeah. They're out of my house, man. Like, they might get slapped on the way out. Don't come in my house telling me anything. Yeah. Timothy. <laughs> Don't send me gifts of cleaning supplies when we have gloves and sponges. Listen, I got here this morning. <laughs> I don't want to hear it, man. That was a total no, glitch it, in the matrix today. I get here. I am usually up by 6.30. <laughs> I brought the kids to school this morning, which has been a rarity lately because I freaking sleep till. 839. Uh I stay up late, but you stay up late and still get up early. But so I get here, I start like cleaning up up here, I start like putting stuff together. I'm like, oh man, I gotta use the bathroom. I go downstairs because there's no bathroom in the garage. Open the door, door's locked. I'm like, push the ring, <laughs> nothing. Knock on the door, hear the dog bark, nothing. Knock on the door again, dog bark, nothing. Now I'm like, huh. Now I'll search around the house. Luckily, found a door, not locked. Yeah, I had a talk with Nikki about that. Came in, <laughs> used the bathroom, said hi to the Ma- dogs. Made yourself some breakfast. Right. <laughs> Wondering where Steve is, because I saw that Nikki's car was gone. So I'm like, huh, maybe they went somewhere together. I'm, like, I'm pretty sure she had to work today. I'm like, it's weird. Uh, nothing. Look around. No. Mm-hmm. I look in your bedroom real quick. I'm like, God. I look again. Sure enough, I'm like, wait, Steve's in there. And then you like move. You're like, oh, hey, who is it? Who is it? <laughs> oh, it's Tim. So here I am thinking, I'm like, I swear to God, dude, I'm coming here. Steve's dead. I'm going to find him. Nikki finally found the right mixture of little things to like <laughs> get rid of me. <laughs> yeah, that was a total. That was a traumatic experience for me. Like, I'm glad oh, I didn't seems... wake up like in fight mode. Ah, I was a ways away from you. 
No, I mean, uh, but like I have other things that you don't need to be close to me, but I must have recognized your voice deep down. Or, you know, the dogs weren't going crazy either, so. Oh, they're cool. I came in there like, oh, they're cool. Yeah, that's weird because I had my alarm set. Nikki was up, and when she's up, usually that's when I wake up because, you know, the dogs are excited. They'll run around after they eat and everything. No, nothing today. Yeah, you were. I fell asleep at 11. I fell asleep early last night, but I fell asleep on the couch, and then I I went and got in bed at, like, 4 in the morning. Same story. Not getting your mask on. Yeah, well, I got three hours with it last night, so not quite the four that the doctor requires or recommends. But All right, I got two memes we're going to do today. One. I apologize about that, by the way. Normally I'm up. And normally you don't really ever drop the kids off and get here at 7.50. <laughs> like, That's true. To be fair to me. <laughs> I was, it was just like, wait, he's in there? <laughs> This dude better not be dead on me. Like, you couldn't hear the machine breathing for me. <laughs> Sorry, man. Flatline code. That would stink. A few days. <laughs> uh, do not be fooled by good communists versus bad communists, Bruce. Uh, yeah, Robert Walsh. I don't even know who that is, but yeah. No communist is good. No. Or, yeah, socialism didn't work there, but it's because they didn't do it right. How many times have we heard that? Every time somebody tries to defend it. Yeah. I mean, we have some elements of socialism here, so. Yes. Some of it works in conjunction with capitalism. Right. But these people are all like, oh, no. With the exception of everybody threatening to take away Social Security to cause fear and anxiety in our, you know, older populations that understand the importance of Oh, I paid into this, so I should get it. Like, Let's think about that for a second. We're going to take away Social Security. That you paid into. Okay. And they're going to raise the age limit. The Supreme Court would overrule that in a second because it's their money you took from them. So, yeah, you could be like, yeah, all right, you're going to end it as of. Well, they borrowed against it a few times. Yeah. But you could say, all right, as of anyone born in 2023, Ford, there's no such thing as Social Security. You could do that. You would be better to do that anyways because then at least you can invest and actually get something better out of it. But uh, Yeah, I'm all about yeah. getting more control of your own paycheck. Yeah. And this one really, uh, I find this funny because this is totally, we've said it before and so true. But to be totally frank, almost every conspiracy theory people had about Twitter turned out to be true. And this is Elon Musk. No, oh, it's. Yep. It's funny, too, when you watch the hearings and the the Democrats are like, uh, are libs of TikTok allowed? Oh, yes, unfortunately. They don't need to be on there. You know what I mean? Like the little softball questions. Like, So you don't want someone highlighting the hypocrisy and stupidity of certain movements? Like that's what corrects us as a social group is somebody has to put on the adult uh, – you know, name tag, whatever, adult hat, and say, no, 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 this is, this is dumb and weak. It's not going to happen. Let's focus back up. Somebody has to be the parent. Somebody has to be making decisions. And usually you want it to be mom and dad so that you get compassion and, you know, the... Yeah. I get it. Whatever. Yeah, I guess. I'm not whatever in you. I'm just... Yeah, you know, I get it. So, yeah. So, tomorrow, Chief Lee's coming in. Um, interim Chief Lee. I don't know why it's still interim. They just don't, I don't know if the plan is there. We'll talk to him about it. I don't know. Uh, hopefully, we'll see what's going on in town and give us some insight, a little bit about himself. Because I don't know a lot about him. I know a little yeah, bit. I don't but, know much about him. Um, so, I'm excited about that. And then, Therese next week. And so, I'm just really trying to get guests in here, make changes, and do things. And It's like, exciting. Yeah. Hopefully you stayed, watched this and, uh, hopefully my, uh, my chapters will work today. Yeah. You've had it. The chapters are good though. Cause then you can go. Well, yeah. But like and, it stops after like the seventh one. And I, I don't know, maybe I'll just start a whole new one and see if maybe it's a, a glitch on my end. 
Maybe. Like, you know, try it, like, maybe from the app or something. I don't know. I'll figure it out. All right. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Hope you like our new setup here. And we yeah, look forward to doing a lot of cool things coming up here. Yep. All right. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Artlist.io.